Hello and welcome back. Uh, today we are going to be continuing our lecture series on the Civil War uh, and specifically today we're going to talk about the assassination of Abraham. Uh, so Lincoln, you know, immediately after the war recognizes he's got a nation to heal. Uh, you know, similar to, to kind of what Grant, uh, you know, how Grant treated Lee at Appomattox Courthouse and, and, and you know, allowed for the terms uh, to be lenient to Lee. Lincoln's got the same kind of general belief, and it's that we are one nation now and, uh, you know, one nation again. And, you know, we have to live with each other. And so we have to heal. And so we shouldn't be punitive and punish the South. And so, uh, you know, he writes his, you know, he writes it out and gives a, a very famous speech uh, with malice towards none. And so with, I'll read it to you here. With malice towards none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan, to do all which may uh, achieve and cherish a just excuse me, and lasting peace among ourselves uh, and with all nations. And so he's talking about if we want to be peaceful, we have to heal these wounds. And very specifically, uh, he's saying uh, we need to make sure that we treat the South uh, with uh, kindness and forgiveness. And so, uh, which, you know, Lincoln was popular enough after the war was over uh, that he probably could have been able to accomplish that. But unfortunately, uh, fate has other plans. Uh, and so John Wilkes Booth is a uh, Southerner uh, who has spent a lot of time in the North. He's an actor. Uh, and so, you know, when the, the war broke out, he was a, a Southern sympathizer and stayed in the North. And so uh, I stayed in the North because you just, that's where actors have work is in the Northern cities. You know, there's not a lot of demand for that in the South. And so, uh, you know, he has been supportive of the South the entire war. And he comes up with a plan uh, to try and get revenge for the South. And originally his plan was to try and kidnap the president. You know, but once Lee surrenders, he changes that plan uh, and he decides to kill Lincoln along with uh, several of uh, his other uh, cabinet officials. And so he plots with conspirators uh, to kill Lincoln and uh, William Seward. So uh, the plan is to do it where he's comfortable. And so this is a, a picture of Ford's theater uh, where uh, Lincoln is scheduled to watch a play called Our American Cousin. Lincoln loves the theater. He loves reading. He loves these uh, th these uh, you know plays, and you know this is an opportune time for uh, Booth because Booth's like a, a you know a B list uh, actor, and so he's at the theater a lot. He knows the layout. It won't be strange for anybody there to see him walking around backstage, and so he'll know how to get into the president's booth, and nobody would really kind of question why he was there. Uh, so uh, the the plan is to attack there. So. Uh, this is the presidential booth, uh, and uh, you know the president is going to watch the play with uh, Henry Rathbone, and, uh, and so when Lincoln shows up, he's watching uh, the play. Uh, booth is going to enter that presidential booth. He's going to stab Henry Rathbone, and then he is going to uh, shoot President Lincoln. Uh, in the head. And so you got kind of a, an artist's rendition here. We, we know that this rendition's not accurate because Rathbone got stabbed first uh, before Lincoln got shot in the, uh, in the back of the head. And now, when this happens, the audience it, thinks it's a part of the play. Like nobody really kind of knows what's happening here. And so, uh, you know, once he's shot in the uh, the back of the head, now Booth has to escape. And so what he does is he jumps down out of the presidential booth and jumps down onto the stage. Uh, when he jumps down onto the stage, he will break his leg. 
Uh, and when he's on the stage, this is when the audience starts to realize, like, oh, what's going on here? Uh, he yells uh, a, a Latin phrase called uh, six semper tyrannis, which means thus ever to tyrants. And so he really thinks that Lincoln is a tyrant uh, because the, the impeding on the, the southern states rights uh, the, weird for the 21st century mind because we think of him as the guy that ended slavery, which is was a tyrannical institution. But you know, different times, different, you know, uh, different ways to think about things. And so uh, he yells six Semper Tyrannus and the, the, the crowd is so shocked that everybody just did, like is kind of frozen uh, and he's going to escape. Uh, he escapes, runs away. He is going to stop by the doctor uh, to actually have his, uh, his leg set. That doctor is going to be uh, convicted in court and then later let go uh, for, for having set that leg. Like, Clearly, uh, you can't uh, punish a doctor for treating a victim. If somebody robbed a bank right now in you know, 2020, uh, got shot doing it, went to the hospital, uh, the doctor's got to help that guy, right? And you help him and then you know, let the, the authorities take over from there. And so Booth gets his leg set and then is on the run. He's going to head back. Uh, he's going to shoot for the, the south uh, where he thinks he can uh, – you know, uh, get some help. So uh, the president is then taken across the street to the Peterson house uh, where he's going to be treated by doctors. Uh, his, the, you know, the vice president, Andrew Johnson, is going to show up there uh, and, you know, many of his other advisors. And so uh, he, this is the building where he's actually uh, going to die. So uh, Mary Todd, Lincoln's wife, uh, Andrew Johnson, uh, you know, they're all going to be kind of crowding in uh, to stay by his side until he uh, dies, but he's going to die right there. Uh, once he's dead, they're going to take his body back to the White House before they send it back to Illinois. And so this is his coffin uh, with the flag draped over it. And then, uh, you know, it's essentially going to go on a, a tour of the country. The entire nation's shocked. You know, I mean, think about what you just went through. You, you, the most traumatic time in American history, right? The, uh, the Civil War and Lincoln's the guy that got us through it. And, you know, he he's talking about healing the nation and all he's saying all the right things. And so, you know, there's this like, you know, immediately after the Civil War, this is there's just this deep sense of relief. And then the guy that helped make that possible just got assassinated. And so the, the nation is going to be absolutely mourning. And so tens of thousands of people line up uh, along the track to uh, pay tribute uh, as he travels across the country. This is the route he uh, his body took. Uh, I, I hope you notice something interesting there. Uh, the route pretty much stays in the north, uh, you know, going through the south. The south are newly defeated and, and you know, taking Lincoln's body through there would be gloating. It would cause problems. And so that doesn't happen. Uh, it's going to travel through the northern states, stopping at all the major cities uh, on its way back to Springfield, where he'll be laid to rest. You know, gigantic parades uh, and, you know, showing up to, to mourn uh, the loss of was probably our, our greatest president. So uh, he uh, gets back to Springfield. That's where he's going to be uh, laid to rest. You still go to Springfield, Illinois today, and they've got uh, a tremendous uh, museum, uh, you know, for uh, Abraham Lincoln. And so it's, uh, you know, it's Illinois. It's the land of Lincoln. Right. So uh, you can visit that whenever, uh, whenever you have time. It's actually a really pretty cool place. So uh, now that starts the hunt for uh, for Booth, right? He's on the run. He's heading into the South. Uh, you know, everybody has recognized him. He's an actor, so people know who uh, they're looking for. Uh, like I said before, he stops at Dr. Samuel Mudd's house to have his leg set. Mudd will get convicted uh, with a life sentence for helping him, uh, but that later gets commuted because, again, you can't punish doctors for healing the sick, even if the sick are bad. We don't want doctors making those choices, right? That would just be absolutely awful. And so uh, they, they got to treat everybody, even if that person is the most awful person in the world.
world. So uh, the hunt is on, uh, you know, we, we go for about 11 days and Booth gets, uh, will end up being trapped uh, on a farm. Uh, he'll refuse to come out. And so what do you do? Well, I mean, you know, uh, today you wouldn't do it this way, uh, but they essentially just set the barn on fire. Um, when the barn's on fire, he's, you got a choice now. You either come out to the, you know, uh, face the military or uh, you burn to death. And so I think almost everybody takes the choice to face the military. And so when he uh, leaves the barn, uh, the, you know, so, we're not quite sure what happens. Uh, one of the soldiers says that uh, Booth raised a weapon towards him and, and then Booth gets shot in the neck. Um, you know, uh, you know, did Booth point a gun at the soldier? I'm sure. I, I, I think there's enough evidence that we can uh, kind of assume that. And so uh, he gets shot in the neck and uh, dies minutes labor, later, labor, minutes later. Uh, and that's the same day that Kirby Smith, remember from the previous lecture, he's the last Confederate general to hold out uh, that uh, Kirby Smith surrenders. And so, uh, you know, I guess you could say the war really ends uh, right here. Uh, Booth had co-conspirators, four co-conspirators uh, uh, who are going to be put on trial. Uh, and so uh, they'll be put on trial and convicted and hung. And so these are the gallows uh, right here. Uh, this is uh, them uh, being put to death. If you uh, take a look at this, I think you uh, can see here that one of the co-conspirators, a Mary Stewart, uh, I'm sorry, not sure. Mary Surratt. Uh, Mary Sur is it's a woman, and so this is going to be the first woman uh, put to death by the federal government. She was, uh, you know, she she was a Southern sympathizer. She owned a uh, essentially what is like a boarding house that she let the co-conspirators meet at. Um, the Mary Surratt's execution is going to be controversial. As a matter of fact, somebody just made a movie about it where they implied that she was wrongfully put to death, that she was totally innocent. Um, the evidence just doesn't suggest that. Uh, nobody really knows how much she knew about the plot to kill Lincoln, uh, but the indications are she did know that that something was going on and that there was a plot. She might not have the details, uh, but she was... Uh, I mean, the evidence just suggests that she willingly uh, allowed these men to plan Lincoln's assassination in her home. And so, you know, uh, you know, was, was she going to be one pulling the trigger? No, uh, but she, she definitely, you know, had a, an instrumental role there. So, you know, innocent, not innocent. I don't know. Is there enough evidence? I, I would suggest that she probably was guilty. Is that enough to uh, put her to death? Uh, well, I mean, that's what happened. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. And so, uh, you know, the conspirators are, are put to death and now uh, Andrew Johnson becomes president. Uh, he, he was the uh, vice president for Abraham Lincoln. Uh, he is a Southerner, uh, but, you know, as a matter of fact, uh, he's, he's a Democrat. And uh, it was really kind of, uh, you know, uh, he he hated the southern aristocracy and so like even though he was a part of the 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 southern institution and didn't leave uh when you know all the the states left the union he stuck around uh you know the the he he just he hated the the southern elites and so because of that people thought uh, that he's going to be a much much harsher uh, to the South than, than Lincoln. And uh, some ways he is, in some ways he isn't. And we'll talk about that more uh, in the, uh, the less of the lectures on uh, reconstruction, uh, but it's going to be uh, Johnson. That's going to take over. He's going to uh, prove to be a, a pretty ineffective president. He's going to have some, uh, some political problems that aren't going to allow him uh, to, uh, you know, to, to effectively run reconstruction. And because of that, uh, congressional Republicans will ultimately take over uh, reconstruction. And when they take over reconstruction, the Republicans in the house are upset and they want to punish the South. And so, uh, we'll, we'll see that that happens, um, to the South, which, uh, was not Lincoln's vision.
So uh, that is uh, essentially going to conclude uh, the lecture uh, for today. Uh, I appreciate your time very much, and we will continue with our next lecture on reconstruction tomorrow. Thank you for your time.